here is from Anand. I'm sorry for butchering uh, your name a little bit. Hey Lars, great videos, very insightful methods. This is regarding your previous 3D sweeps for a bike frame video. You mentioned that using surfaces to drive and generate the 3D curves was kind of old school. I'm working on a similar project right now, and it would be great if you could give me an intro or something to about, uh, you know, the message that, that I would be doing. I think that is a great, great, uh, great, great topic. So let's just get rid of Kenny's images here for a second. Um, so what um, Anand is, is referring to is that if we go to, if we go to your YouTube and we search Lars Christensen, that dude right there, and let's go to his channel. Gonna play Do you video. use? Shut him up for a second. Um, if we go to videos, this might be the easiest way to find this. Um, we did a how to do a 3D sweet bike frame. How to create a chop not long ago. Um, and this was Jacob Anderson had uh, had done a video on how he did a bike frame. And uh, see if I can find it in here. Um, and um, this beautiful renderings. You should go and check him out. Uh, if you go and find this video, 3D Sweeps for a bike frame, uh, you can get all that detail. Um, but one of the things we did in this one, we used actually surfaces to create um, some some shapes that gave us the the bike frame kind of uh, in the end. And what I said there was this is kind of old school using surfaces. So when Anand sent out and says, hey, how would you do it? Um, I thought, yeah, that is probably uh, a, good, a good one to attack here. So what I would do is, um, and now there's going to be a bunch of, uh, of, of bike mechanics and bike fabricators out there who's going to probably be like, I don't know much about bikes and I don't. But what I did do was I went out and I found a picture of a bike frame because I thought I would pick something else that uh, what Jacob was doing. Um, so I have a picture here. And um, if I was going to model something up like this, I would probably actually use a combination between um, standard modeling and uh, between sculpting environment. Uh, so I thought we could talk a little bit about that. So what I would do was in here in Fusion, so I opened up a new document, um, I would insert a canvas of our, of our motorcycle frame here. Let's go out to here and there's this chopper frame. Now, I actually don't know much about choppers. Let me hit okay to this. Um, I don't know much about sizes or anything like that, but if I right click here, I can calibrate this and, um, you know, we made it a thousand millimeters. Is that is that too much off? Is that too crazy? I don't know, you tell me. Let me turn my audio back on. I would also right click, I would edit this canvas and I would probably place, um, I would probably place this this picture somewhere where in the audio where it makes sense. And again, I'm not a bike maker, so I don't really know what is a good uh, placement for an audio. Place it there. Um, we I would probably start creating some sketches. Let's create a sketch on this front face here a 2D rectangle and um, and start placing something that's going to resemble um, whatever we're trying to do here. I don't know. So there we have a sketch. Just right click and uh, move that cam. I would place this something. So in this case here, I'm kind of going parallel with this might not be the smartest thing. Maybe it's this area back here. But my point is that um, I would do this first off and then I would probably start creating some sketches that um, additional sketches in here where I'm kind of working with this geometry. So if we open a new sketch on this face here, um, I would probably do, there's probably, you know, something that goes through here and, the, and this, center line, I would make sure that I get that dimensioned to something that I know is is right. And maybe it has a link to it, right? That's 100 millimeter long. Um, start making some sketches here that maybe is 
somewhat uh, fully defined to your origin and, and what you're trying to do here. Um, maybe you would also have a line going down this, um, this main frame down here. Um, and that one maybe is also fully defined. So you can start um, creating some some um, some parametric modeling in here that all fits up. And this is what the bike manufacturer, I would assume, will use kind of like as a reference to, to kind of building out uh, this frame. What you could do now uh, with these sketches was I could actually start creating some some construction planes also for this. So if I use like plane along a path and I select this line, I can actually create a plane right at the end of this one. So now I get a construction plane one. I could do the same thing again, plane along this axis. See how I have a plane coming along there and that could be my plane two. So I'm making everything kind of parametric scheduling here. And then maybe when I'm ready, I go and I create a new component. That's my, it's gonna be my frame body. Um, and now I could say, all right, create a new sketch and use that plane one as my, as my sketch here and see for circle. And I don't know how big this is gonna be, 30. Move it over here looking at this here. Maybe it's a little bit bigger than that. 45 maybe, um, and, and this is just standard modeling I'm doing right now, right? I'm doing a standard extrude. I can actually, instead of do distance, I can do the object and select that sketch point. And now that component have this, because this uh, on a bike frame, I would assume that there's certain components on a bike frame that is not all bendy tubey stuff. This one here maybe have a sleeve in it, right? Uh, same thing with the back end back here, that is some some plate, angle plate and stuff like that. There's been machine and stuff like that. Now to do the frame, and my sketch disappeared because I did something with it. Let's turn it back on. Uh, now I actually, and this is maybe more to you and then, uh, would go into the sculpt environment. And in the sculpt environment, by the way, you have all these predefined shapes in here. Um, and so I'm gonna go in here and know that there is a pipe. So I can select this pipe and I can select this, it's looking for the path, I can actually select this path here um, and it starts out giving you square tubing, uh, but if you click here, now it's a, uh, a circular tubing and you can control uh, the size of whatever you want this tubing to be, 35, maybe it's 25, I don't know, uh, maybe it's 30, just make it a little bit bigger. Um, so be aware of that you can you can actually do this inside of the, the sculpt environment here. Now, where what I really wanna show is also um, a couple of different things. First of all, um, whenever you're working in the sculpt environment, where we are right now in this purple environment, I will actually normally do everything I can in here in sculpt. Uh, I don't create multiple of these unless it's multiple components. So this bike frame is all gonna be welded together in the end. So I actually want it to be kind of a, a, a welded, you know, one, one component, one, one thing. Um, so what I wanted to show you here is um, kind of that shape I did on the other uh, video, um, how you could do something maybe somewhat similar to this, uh, more free form, not so constrained. So if I go up here and select the cylinder shape, and I'm actually gonna do it, I'm gonna select the plane down here on purpose and just sketch something out. Let's make this one about 25. Um, you will see that what I now got is this, is this ring sitting down here uh, in, in no man's land, really. Um, but now what I can do is if I right click and hit edit form, if you watch any of these um, sculpt videos before, you know uh, what, where I'm headed with this. Um, you know, I can select this thing and I can now start moving it around. And I'll probably use my, my view cube up here a little bit. And I could actually start dragging uh, this thing around up here um, and place this, this frame about where I think I want it here. I can even kind of 
bring it in an angle a little bit like this go back up on the top view that's where i kind of think i want this frame to start um and now i could go to the right view and we could double click on an edge so we select that whole edge um, we could align one of my favorite things to use is this set pivot point what will let you set the, the the pivot that you're working on so you know i'll bring it down into maybe minus 20 degrees whatever i maybe have this kind of align that here just remember to hit the little green check mark again when you're done with it and now if i grab this arrow i could start dragging this down how long i want to make this um and of course if i want to change something i can just hit the square so and this this work here um, as many people will know that this is all about, um, you know, practice to, uh, to be able to, to, to work with, with the sculpt environment. But um, now, we'll go to the top view here, um, we could start working with this shape. So now what we can do, if you hold down Alt, hold down Alt on your keyboard or the Option key, I can actually drag out a new section of, uh, of this here. And then you could start kind of using the band and uh, and move this and just make sure that you're you're doing this in all dimensions because um, it will uh, do this in multiple dimensions on you. Um, but what we can start doing here is adding these new sections in here, right? Um, and 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 start creating kind of the band we want. And uh, as I've said before, whenever I'm working in this sculpt environment, that uh, this takes practice. This is the more time you're spending learning to use this tool, the better um, the better you the better you get at it. Um, so that's that's really really important um, to to take the time to kind of getting more and more familiar with uh, with this tool. Now. Let's just look at the top here. So you can see here how I'm kind of creating uh, the band going here uh, through here. And I'm just going to stop here for a second, hit OK to this. Um, so you can kind of see how I'm bending this pipe. Um, and again, like I said, the more you're spending, more the time you're working with this, um, the better it's going to be. So this is a lot of practice. Um, but um, what I wanted to show is I've used symmetry before when you're working on one shape, but also be aware of you can also do a mirror duplicate of your whole part. So that works very much like um, the duplicate we are using in a standard modeling environment. So now we have kind of mirrored these two over here um, and also be aware of that uh, you have other tools in here. So we can actually bridge, uh, you know, this shape here with uh, with this shape here, um, oops, I make sure we get them all. Uh, so we can bridge these together and uh, and form this here, and then again you can continue working working with this. Right, this is probably not my end result. A little bit bent like this, um, but you get what I'm saying. You can work with this. And, and make your bicycle frames like this too, if you if you want to. And what I wanna to show to kind of wrap this one up is that there is a thicken in here. Uh, so we can select this shape here. And if we do like a three millimeter thick, inside or outside, minus two millimeter maybe, uh, then we actually give it a thickness, and now it's a two, and the same thing we could do Right click, repeat, thicken. We could do the same thing for this one, minus two. And when I exit out of this um, here, let's just turn the sketches off for a second, the canvas off for a second, uh, the construction planes, whoops, the construction planes for a second. We're ending up with tubes here. And, uh, and if we go into the component, do the bodies, we can actually start combining them using the combining tool and we can turn uh, these into to that one body we probably want in there and we can trim it we can do all different kinds of things 
but this is maybe the other way and then to, to do something um, like this where you could make multiple sweeps in different angles and uh, and things like that so I hope uh, I hope that was was a useful little trick so here you are actually combining uh, and the Sun comes on overexposed um, this is a way where you're combining uh, the standard work environment with the sculpt environment, the free form environment. Um, and again, I can only say uh, it, I can't say it enough. The free form environment, practice. That's the best advice I have in there. Go in there messing around. There's a bunch of videos out on YouTube about that. Like it? Thumbs up. Thumbs down. And if not, comments, let me know. You guys are the best.